Welcome to another Tech Help Quick Queries video. It's so number 34 brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we got a bunch of questions and I'm going to answer them. Kind of like, uh, what was that? Uh, oh, Kindergarten Cop. I got a bunch of questions. Oh, wait, no, how's it going? Oh, I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. <laughs> Great movie. Anyways, Quick queries videos are all about lots and lots of questions people ask that maybe they don't need a whole video on themselves and I put them together and it's called quick queries. It's not always about queries, although sometimes it is. So I, I actually talked to, to one guy at the uh, MVP summit, uh, or no, I'm sorry, at Access Day, and he said that he saw my quick queries videos, but he knows all about queries, so he never bothered watching them. He didn't realize that it wasn't actually about queries. It's like a double entendre, right? Queries, questions, so... If, if any of you were, were in that boat, well, now you know better, right? <laughs> Going to start off today with, uh, I got a whole bunch of questions and comments about my multiple cascading combo boxes video series. So if you haven't watched this, go check this out first. Uh, multiple cascading combo boxes is where you can pick a value in a combo box and the ones after it are based on the one before. So you pick a country, then you pick a state, and you get the list of states from that country. You get the list of counties from that state and so on down the line. We did five of them. You can do as many as you want, but we did five. First up, Jade Dragon says, Ontario does regions like they do in British Columbia. If you want to get more confusing, consider Louisiana where they have parishes instead of counties or Texas and your 254 counties. Um, yeah, different regions call them different things. And there's really no reason why you couldn't make a separate table or even in your existing tables to have what it's called. So for example, if you pick Canada from this list, right? It could read what Canada calls its states and update this caption. That's certainly possible. And uh, if anyone wants to see how to do that, post a comment down below, maybe I'll make another video. But yeah, I guess the United States is the only country that uses a zip code. Everybody else calls it a postal code or something else, right? Counties are something different. I think cities are pretty universal. But uh, yeah, that's pretty fun. Always want to give a shout out to people who use the super thanks. So thanks to Bungie1962. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And yes, for those of you who are curious, this is still a thing. I don't know why, but, but it is. <laughs> I get them all the time. Next up, Gregory asks an excellent question. He says, because of the one-to-many one relationship, why does the customer record store the city, county, state, and country Simply storing a street ID should relationally provide everything else. You are 100% absolutely correct. What he's saying is, if I know that this person is United States, New York, Erie, Amherst, Millersport Highway, if I know Millersport Highway, I can figure out everything above it relationally. That is correct. However, I set it up this way in case you only have partial information. What if you only know what state the person's in, right? You don't have all of this stuff. You can't put the street in, right? What if you only know their city, all right? You'll have city, county, state, country, but you won't know what their street is. And so if you can't store the street ID, you won't know any of this information. Can you do it the other way? Absolutely. If that's the way you want to build your database, then by all means, please do. You could make all of these unbound boxes and just that last one is the one that stores the actual data in your database. So this is, that's definitely a valid way to do it if you want to. Um, this is storing some redundant information, and some people might even argue that it's not 100% normalized. But again, if you have partial data, then this setup is necessary. So excellent observation, Gregory. Along the same lines, Cyberman says, I was wondering about another possibility. What if someone would decide to put in a state or city without first putting in the country? Is it possible to make access filling it in for you as you switch to a next field? That's possible, but the way we have it set up now, you wouldn't see a list of states unless you first pick the country. What you could do is you could put a wild card, maybe an asterisk, in the country field. And if they picked that, that would show all of the states from all of the countries. That's a certain that, that's a possibility. You could certainly do it that way. Or you could just initially leave all of these boxes unfiltered and show all of them. And if you really want to drop this down, if you know they're in the city of Amherst, Drop this down, look through all the cities and type in Amherst and it could fill in the ones above it. That's another possibility. Again, I'm just showing you different Legos. You could put them together in whatever pieces you want. If you'd like to see me make a video about that, 
post a comment down below. And if enough people are interested, I'll make a video. But again, excellent question. Uh, Bolantai, Bolanti asks, how would you do this if there is no state or county in some countries? If we apply the same principle to employment in a company, there are different levels and different divisions, like division, sector, department, team. Some have five, some have two. Well, the easy way that I would do this, the easy, the easy cheesy way is just put an all option in here. So for example, let's say a country doesn't have states or counties. They just have countries and cities. I would just put all in here and then all in there. And then those two options will filter down to your list of cities. That's the cheesy way. Um, the more complicated way would be to obviously have some VBA logic in here that would look and say, okay, if there are no states, right? Um, or, or maybe if there's only one option, flag, you know, put it in there by default and then just bring it right down to city. There's, again, there's a million ways you can do it. That's the simple way um, to, to keep all the data you know, the same. But you can obviously program exceptions in, right? If there's only one state, put, you know, one or all, you know, all or only or whatever you want to call it in here. And then just, and then just drop the selection down to city. So again, if you'd like me to make a video about that, you know, put some comments down below and I'll make another video. But great, another great question. You guys are full of great questions with this video. Same basic question here. Sometimes people get mad if I... I, I answer someone else's question, but they ask the same question. I don't mention them. So I'm mentioning you. So you got, <laughs> you got credit too for this question, but you basically answered the previous question. That's what I would do is just make an all option. Rick L says, where can we get the lessons for not in list events that trigger a pop-up form? And when closes puts that new data in the list box. Well, I cover a little bit of the on not in list event in the extended cut from my relational combo boxes video. And you'll remember, so you should be able to see this one. As far as getting the value that was just added and adding it to the table that's a little more advanced, I covered that in Access Developer 35. That's covered in this lesson here, where it'll actually prompt up and say, hey, you know, enter the name of the new state that you want to add, Virginia, right? And it's going to say it's not in the table. Would you like to add it? And then it'll put it right in the value. It's a little trickier, involves a little bit of a VBA workflow, but it's not super hard. You can add the value behind the scenes, either with a record set or with a simple SQL statement, either one. George asks, is there a way to put all this in a class and use the class in the form by giving the form and the controls an open form event? Um, is it possible? Yes. I will say I haven't even covered classes in my developer course yet because in my 30 years of working with Access, I've never needed one. There hasn't been anything that I couldn't do without a class. So I usually reserve that for object oriented programming, like programming with C or something like that. But I am going to cover classes in my developer course coming up just because a lot of people ask me about them. And there are some cool things you could do. Um, yeah, I guess you could do this with a class. I don't know. I, probably. But is it the best use for it? Eh, maybe not. I'll have to tinker with it and let you know. Mitchell says, what if you make a mistake and accidentally put a U.S. state in for the wrong country? You pick Canada and put in Delaware. Is there a way inside the form to fix or delete it? Well, yeah. Just go back into your edit form, your big multiple cascading or a uh, uh, multiple subform, right? Those nested subforms, just go in there and change it. Delete it out of one and add it to the other one, right? Or go to the table, change the ID there. There's a million ways you could do it. You could set yourself up a, you know, a, a separate form for each one where it's got the parent combo box right next to it, all right? Set up a state form where you got a continuous form with all your states listed and have the country combo box be to the left of it. And you just pick the com pick the, the country there. They'll all be the same for every state, but at least you can easily edit it, right? Or you could even make one big edit form that's one giant continuous form where they're all together, right? Linked by a query. So there's a million ways you could do it, but yeah, yeah yes, you can very easily. <laughs> Is there a way for the user to do it on the customer form? That's up to you. If you want to give them that power, I wouldn't, but sure. Moving on. It looks like a lot of you enjoyed my April fool's joke. Thank you very much for all the comments. There was a little bit of heckling, although it turned into a database joke. Boolean, get it? <laughs> That's funny. A couple of you submitted jokes of your own. Why is access so exhausting? Because you only have runtime. <laughs> um, 
Oh, oh, I didn't see that. You have my permission to use this for the cost of a mug. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Goodbye. <laughs> Mugs are available for purchase in my YouTube store. It's a, they, YouTube gives you the opportunity to, to merchandise stuff. I don't know what, the, none of this stuff really fits for me merchandising anything. So if you go to my channel and pick store, there's a mug. I don't know. That's, I just picked that mug. I don't know. They put my logo on it. Um, if you guys want it, like shirts or any of that other stuff, I could do that too. But I, I, I don't. I didn't think anybody would actually want this. I think I sold one of these in like ten years. So <laughs> I'll be honest, though. I, I did buy one for myself. It's sitting on my shelf. So <laughs> and 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 yep. See, pe people still do it. They they still do it. It's okay. I don't mind. I'm glad some of you enjoyed the link that I had you click on. All right, so that's going to do it for today's quick queries. They're not all rocket science, folks. Some of them are just for fun. But uh, I'm glad you stuck around, glad you watched. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.